What's up everyone, it's your boy Norn Red 89 here. Here we are continuing our Psycho review series on to Psycho 2. Two decades later, this sequel came out and that's pretty wild. Still starring Anthony Perkins, but we have a different director at the helm in this one. And this film is also written by Tom Holland, who's famous for doing the first Child's Play film. And the cinematography on this film was done by Dean Cundy, so it does look amazing. And of course, we're going to be getting into some spoilers, so if you haven't seen it, you need to go run out and watch it and then come back and check out this video. And of course, you know the usual thing. We're going to be getting into positives, negatives, then the rating, and I'll send you all home. So as I said in my intro, Psycho 2 is two decades later. And to be honest, this sequel has no business being as good as it is, especially being a sequel to a 1960s classic done by Alfred Hitchcock. And like I said, the fact that it's 22 years later and this film, like I said, is a banger. It's amazing. And it kind of is laid the template at the end of the first film in 1960s. Alfred Hitchcock's like the very first one. How they talk about Norman's mental status and how he's not completely Norman anymore. He's mostly the mother character and all this kind of stuff. And then you hear him speaking to himself in his mother's voice in his head. So all this stuff is laid out. And in the second film, we get to see more in-depth character development and character arc stuff with Norman as he struggles to be normal and actually be part of society, have a normal job. And as I said, struggles with, you know, seeing his mom, seeing notes from his mom, all this kind of stuff. So let's get into the positives right away. And as I said, one big positive, I just talked about him, Anthony Perkins as Norman Bates. Oh my God, this is, this is his movie right here, Psycho 2. He did direct the third film, but this film, oh man, in terms of carrying the movie he does such a good job as the main character and all like you can see the struggle with his mind like all over his face and the way he portrays himself on screen and you can really tell he's trying to be a part of a society when he gets out of the mental institution he gets that job at the diner and he's really like kind of trying to be a helper and be there and support people you know and be a good co-worker to the people at the diner Add into that, we have a fabulous actress, Meg Tilly, who plays Mary in this film, and she is great. The perfect character and the perfect actress to bounce off of Anthony Perkins. All their scenes together, they have such good chemistry, and it's pretty amazing. This film, when Anthony Perkins comes to find out that his hotel is still being ran, is ran by this guy named Mr. Toomey, but he's kind of just running it into the ground. So Anthony, like, you know, Norman's just like, get out of here, you know, you're fired, bro. Like, you're ruining my business. Like, this isn't like some sex motel. This is like, you know, his family's, you know, his estate, basically his family's work. So he kicks him out and like, oh, and is actually offers a place to stay to Mary because she goes through some problems where she's fighting with her boyfriend. So she needs a place to stay and Norman offers her a place. And it's kind of cool because it's like he's testing himself to see if it's like, oh, you know, will I have that urge again or will something happen? All this kind of stuff. So it, you can see that his character is trying to grow and is trying to mature throughout the films and this franchise and this second one like I said is the beginning because the first film we focus like a good 30 40 minutes on Marine and we don't get to see is like Norman Bates till midway through the film and this one it's all about him it's all about how the town views him the story and all this kind of stuff and how people like I said the the balance of how some people are judgmental and once you do bad things they'll never see you any other way and then there's other people who are very forgiving and they're willing to let someone you know make amends for it or believe that people can change and all that is a big theme carried throughout this entire film another great thing like i said the cinematography done by dean cundy oh man like it's just this film looks great especially for being it's not black and white you're like oh man like how are they gonna do it like that black and white classic you there's certain scenes that you just you can't match certain scenes just because of the nostalgia nature of the way black and white looks but the cinematography in this film was great like oh just like some of the stuff like I, we're talking spoilers already but one of my favorite shots is actually at the end of this movie and it's like oh, it's a poster of one of the movies like it's a poster version that you can get for this movie and it's freaking amazing like that's probably my favorite shot in this film but oh we won't talk like cut to that right away but yeah oh man norman bates's struggle and to see his fall to going back as he's basically tortured and tormented by someone who's calling him people leaving him notes and as you're a viewer finding out you really think it's just you're he's an unreliable narrator so you think it's him 
and he's going crazy and everybody else, no one's seeing it. No one's hearing these things, you know. The only thing that's really everybody's seeing is Mr. Toomey's like a real big asshole. But besides that, no one's seeing the notes or anything like that. So you as a viewer are thinking he's just kind of going crazy again. It's like, nope, that didn't work. The decades of, you know, therapy and mental institutions did not help him. But come to find out that there's people actually torturing him, doing this to him. And it's two people. And it's amazing. Like, it's such a good twist. That's what I loved about this film. Is there's two really good twists in this movie that I didn't see coming. And I freaking loved it. Like, and as a matter of fact, this was one of my first watches. I've seen, before I did this franchise review, I've seen Psycho. I've seen Psycho 3. And I've seen the remake. I never saw Psycho 2 or Psycho 4 for whatever reason. I don't know why. I saw Psycho 3 and didn't see Psycho 2, but yeah, that's how it went. And like I said, this was a first time watching. This is a banger. Like I said, it had no business being as good as, as it is being a sequel to a classic. And I loved every moment of this film, especially when we get into that third act. It is a potent, powerful third act that just keeps rolling. And I love Mary's character and her struggle with trying to convince Anthony Perkins and Norman Bates that he's not going crazy that it's her and her mother that they were torturing him the whole time sending him the notes and like dressing like his mom and really trying to mess with his mind and it's just oh that he went off the deep end and she realizes like it's cool how they're there's Mary and then there's her mother Lila how they like really are like the complete opposite of the same coin you know one is like torn with the vengeance and convinced that Norman needs to be put away forever and the other one's like no I can forgive him he's not a killer and he's better than that so this film has some very potent themes, some amazing acting and act actresses all across the board. And damn, the cinematography, like I said, and the story is so good and it's very powerful. And yeah, by that ending scene, just that scene of him standing out there and his mother like in the window, like and he has her in the, in the chair. And oh, also one twist, we got to bring it up. The mom, the mom twist of someone who's actually calling him and it is his real mother or someone who thinks it's his real mom, the sister of his mother. It's just whew, damn. Like I said, this film has everything you want in it. And it was just, it delivered on all aspects for me. In terms of a sequel, it's a badass sequel. Gonna go down for me in terms of sequels. Probably one of the best horror sequels out there. Easy, Psycho 2. And in my book, this film's gonna get a 10 out of 10 for real. Like, there's no way, there's like one thing that I don't like about this film. I'll talk about negatives, but it's a 10 out of 10 for me because I had such a blast. And I really wouldn't change too much about this film. The only thing that kind of bothered me is when... The sheriff, they dig up the mom's grave to show Norman Bates. That just seemed too unrealistic for me to prove to his to him that the mom was dead. That just seemed a little unrealistic to me. But besides, that's like a minor picky thing. Everything else is fucking amazing in this film. Like I said, it's a banger of a sequel. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And let me know in the comment section, peeps, what you thought of this film. Do you really enjoy this sequel? Is this one that matches that first film for you? Does it surpass it? Or are you like, oh no, 20 years later, no. Psycho is something that they can't touch. I would love to hear from all of you to hear your thoughts. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Next, we're going to be on to Psycho 3. And we have a gift to give a shout out. It's April 4th and it is the late, great Nor uh, Anthony Perkins' birthday who played Norman Bates. Oh, we miss you so much. And I found out April 4th is his birthday. So shout out to Anthony Perkins. We love you. Have a safe and happy day, everyone. Peace out.